We're here to answer your game, gaming, and game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Uh, social media works too. We're everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word, even on MeWe. Well, the best place to get questions to us is through the website. That way I get two copies of it. One goes on the website, one gets sent to me an email and they don't get lost. I'm not going to say no though to a question asked anywhere online. Since we started collecting your questions, we've gotten a handful of questions related to adding beverages to your tabletop game night. For example, these questions from Emmett O'Brien, who wrote, What are your suggestions for adult beverages on a beer and pretzel game night? And what are your rules for beverages on a game night? I have banned blue soda from my <laughs> games because for some mystical reason, blue soda always gets knocked over. Fair. Or... This question from Michael Hutchinson. How do you deal with the gamer that has too, a few too many drinks, but you really like that person? All right, so tonight we are going to talk all about mixing beers with your board games or sodas with your spritz and spritzers with your story games, uh, spirits with your story games, that would have worked too, uh, and sodas. Um, I think this is going to be just as valid no matter what type of tabletop games you prefer to play and probably also applies to things like LARPs. Just remember, while we're going to be talking primarily about adult beverages, there's always an alternative for those who, for mm -hmm. any reason, do not partake. A beer and pretzels night doesn't have to be the time you just don't invite your sober friend. Very true. And please do not pressure anyone who is not interested in partaking in a beverage to do so. That is not a cool thing to do. Now, kind of part of that is the first thing that should happen before anyone pours their first drink or cracks their first can or pops their first top is a discussion on the rules, the table rules, the, the rules for drinks at your game night. This is something that needs to happen before any games get played and even better should be discussed before the group even gets together. Yeah, this could be a formal session zero. And if you're having a session zero, the topic of drink etiquette could be one you plan to include. Or it could just be something informal, like a reminder at the bottom of your game invite. Yeah, so what we're looking at here is that you should include the following things. And I don't, I'm going to try to be comprehensive here, but if anyone in the chat room knows something I miss, or Sean, you're welcome to jump in here too, is really basic, are drinks allowed? It is legit, especially at a game night, especially if you're playing maybe an expensive game or something with high quality components, you just don't allow drinks at your game night. So if you do that, make sure there's some way for people to hydrate, like make sure you have breaks. But I get it, no drinks in the game room is a valid way to do this. If drinks are allowed, are there any limits? So are there any that aren't allowed? I have seen people who do not allow sugary beverages because they are terrible when they do spill on things. I know many game nights that don't allow alcohol, which is totally legit, but this needs to be set up ahead of time. If you say BYOB, are people thinking bring your own beers or are they thinking bring your own beverages? That should be clarified. Who's providing the drinks, especially if you're hosting a game night at your house? This varies greatly by host. Some people would be mad at you for showing up with your own beverage because they provide it, whereas others probably can't afford to be able to have a group full of people sitting around gaming and drinking everything out of their fridge. So clarify. There's also, there's also a matter of whether or not if you're going to bring something, are you bringing something for everyone or is everyone yes. bringing their own? Yeah, very true. So who's bringing the drinks? Uh, where do they go when they get there? So this is this is the before you're drinking, like before you're playing. Like, are they going in a fridge? Should people bring their own cooler? Just clarify that ahead of time. Like, hey, I've got room in my fridge. Don't worry about it. But hey, I don't have room in my fridge. You better bring a cooler or somewhere to keep your drink cold if it needs to be cold. Absolutely. Um, how many drinks are you going to allow? This is mainly for adult beverages. Like, sure, bring a couple beers, like limit it to two is very different than, hey, show up with a case, right? It's a yeah. very different style of game night. Um, for most game nights, you probably do want to limit it at least somewhat, which is probably just your basic rule, like feel free to drink, but be responsible and don't take it too far. Absolutely. And then these rules could change. So this is something I threw in here because I'm a parent and we often will, we, we don't allow the drinks to come out until the kids go to bed. This could be different. It could be after 10 o'clock. It could be whatever, the, whatever rules that may change. Like, you know what? I'm going to provide you with some stuff and not other stuff. Any, any other things that could affect the previous questions? 
finally we get to what to do with the drink while you're playing right what do you do with your coffee in your hand now i say this one for last because to me this is actually really a different topic and this is more important to a tabletop game night again whether playing board games or rpgs or whatever you're playing one of the biggest concerns about having beverages at the table is protecting the games being played whether this be protecting the tsunami of Catan or keeping those character sheets free of wine and coffee stains. Absolutely. Even the bellhop can make mistakes. And we've got <laughs> video footage from a Gloomhaven oh, yeah. actual play that shows the dangers of liquids and games. I think we've got two, actually, for Gloomhaven. <laughs> so it's not... Well, the yeah, but there was one. only one that actually got the cards. They got the cards, yeah. yeah. There was a bad one. Um, so, first off, I very strongly suggest do not allow any drinks on the table the game's being played at, the actual game table. Whether that's your kitchen table, a big, nice, big boardroom table like I've got, or your, um, I don't even know the companies that make boardroom tables anymore, board game topper that goes on top of your kitchen table, whatever it happens to be. Um, the easiest way to do this, of course, was side tables, um, you know, TV trays, foldable trays. But I've also seen at a couple friends' places now where their game room is also a bar room, like their, their lounge, and they just they leave the drinks up at the bar. So when it's not your turn, you walk over to the bar, you take a drink of your drink, you put your drink down, you sit back at the table. Um, similarly, at like a game store or a cafe, you could have your drinks at a nearby separate table instead of the one you're actually playing at. And speaking of a local game store, what I often do is I when it's busy and all the tables are used up i'll use chairs i'll use the chair next to me to put my drink on yeah and i know i struggle with this i drink coffee big shock everyone a lot yeah. of coffee and not drinking coffee while i game is kind of alien to me mm -hmm. but one solution i'll use uh also, much like at the flgs is just putting that coffee a long way away out mm -hmm. of reach on a, if, the, if you have a bigger table or or more space to spread out so that there's nothing or no one to knock it over because mm -hmm. remember, even if you're not damaging a game, spilling a drink is still a party foul. Yeah, you don't want to spill anything anywhere. You don't want to get it on the, the host floor either. Now, if you don't have somewhere else to keep your drink, then you really should be using coasters, um, preferably something with some kind of lip. Now, those aren't going to help w usually with a glass being completely knocked over, but at least they'll catch like minor drips and more importantly, condensation, because that is definitely a thing, uh, hot or cold beverages. Yeah, you don't want condensation messing up your table, even if it doesn't come near your games. Uh, either way, make sure to keep things like paper towels or, or just towels handy, just in case. This is one that I find people don't think of or fail at. I know many people with dedicated game rooms, but then they have their paper towels like upstairs in the kitchen or in the hallway closet, no, not nearby. You should always have a stock close at hand, possibly even just sitting right on the table for that matter, but at least nearby. Now, related to this, pouring is a big deal. Anytime you're actually pouring a drink, you shouldn't be doing that over the game, over the table. This, again, you side tables or pour them in the kitchen or on an island or over a sink or just away from all the game components. Yeah, and I think that one's a no-brainer. But things like water are really easy to do without thinking, yet yeah. pouring any liquids is a no-no. Yeah. It's amazing how horribly wrong pouring a liquid can go in the blink of an eye. Now, on the flip side of this, Instead of trying to keep the drinks away from the games, you should also be considering protecting the games because there still may be an inevitable spill. Even if you got the drink on the side table, someone's still picking it up and they're drinking and it slips or someone says a rather amusing joke and they spray everywhere, whatever it happens to be. Uh, there's lots of ways to do this. We could probably do a whole episode on protecting your games. And I think we might have, I know we've talked about it. We've covered large portions of it. Yeah. yeah, large portions. So like laminating character sheets, sleeving cards, um, varnishing your boards if you go that far using coin capsules for counters there are all kinds of things you can do to protect your games all of these may be worth spending money on and taking the time to do if you're going to start saying hey feel free bring your drinks yeah and also there are ways you can take to protect your beverage holder from being knocked aside mm -hmm. from requiring lids which especially for things like water bottles is a great idea there are also spill proof options spill proof proof cups you can even get you know spill, mm -hmm. spill proof wine glasses and good old solutions like when i'm on the job i use tape rolls there you know yep. you put a cup cup of coffee in a tape roll and i'm allowed to put that down next to a $40,000 lighting console whereas otherwise i'm not 
Yeah, actually, a lot of the modern board game tables, the shiny, fancy ones, again, I'm, I, I'm blanking on names. I know Game Toppers is one of them, but any of those fancy, a lot of those have cup holders in them. So yeah. use them because yeah. I don't know how many times I see pictures of people's games and the cup sitting right next to the cup holder. Like, come on, put it in. Well, I guess maybe the handles get in the way. All right, so th those are just our overall applies to all beverages and all game nights, whatever you happen to be playing. So Emin did say, what are your rules? So as we're talking to me, what, why don't I go through mine? So any game night we host, this is, this is a given. If you're coming to my host, just assume this. We're going to provide water and coffee in the form of K-cups, possibly tea if we have teapods, but we don't always keep teapods in the house. But you're welcome to use them. Anything we have, K-cup-wise, whether it's hot chocolate, you're welcome to have. And if anyone wants something else, they bring in their own. Yes, we may have pop. I might have beer in the fridge. I may offer it, but just don't assume that. If you, wanna, if you want anything else, you bring your own. Adult beverages, special occasions only. Uh, our usual Monday night game group, no one drinks. If I have people over on a Saturday night to play games, we don't drink unless it's some kind of special occasion, whether it's New Year's, birthdays, etc. If my kids are going to be present, I ask everyone to save the adult beverages until after they're in bed. Now for storage, I do have a fridge in the laundry room. That's right next to my game room. Then there's plenty of room in that 99% of the time. I'll admit in pandemic time, it's a little more full than usual, but there's still room in there for a few drinks. As for limits, I don't have a hard and fast rule. The rule that is hard and fast is that no one drive home after having more than two. If you've had two, you're staying here, you're crashing on my couch, you're using sleeping in one of the girls' beds, or we're going to get you a ride home, or we're going to call you an Uber. Once we start gaming, that's where I say to use wooden trays. I have, I have foldable wooden trays. I have four of them in the basement. I put them in the four tables of the game room. We use those where possible. The paper towels are on just the other side of the door to that laundry room. And I just remember, if it's your house, you need to protect yourself and your property. And that goes for games and furniture. But also remember that you may be open to legal action if you were to mm -hmm. knowingly allow someone to depart your premises inebriated and someone became injured. Plus, it's just the right thing to do. All right, moving on from rules that we have on game night, let's get into the other part of Emmett's question is what do you drink on game night? Now, number one, you should always have water available at all times. Like this goes for anywhere hosting gaming, whether it's a restaurant, at a game store, at a coffee shop or gaming at home. Ideally, this would be offered for free. Our friendly local game store is fantastic for that. They offer bottled water. You can... Just go up, ask for water, they'll give you water, which is great. And here at the house, anyone can have water. We generally just have tap water, but we've had, you can get water through the coffee machine if you'd rather it's slightly filtered. Now, it's all too easy, as any gamer knows, to get into a game and then four hours later realize you haven't eaten or had anything to drink. Mm. And hydration is important. Yeah, and again, I mentioned this at the top of the show. If you are not allowing drinks at the game table, you need to allow for breaks. You have to let people do that. I would say at least every hour, if not more frequently, just to give people a chance. Next comes uh, Sean and I's favorite, I think, the caffeinated beverages. Well, these aren't for everyone. I, there are a variety of people who avoid caffeinated beverages for many reasons. These have been a staple of game night for years, like as long as I can remember. The, the of course, the RPG joke that everyone talks about is the gamers drinking their Mountain Dew. Uh, that more applies to those of you in the U.S. where it's carbonated. That wasn't something we grew up on, but we managed to find our own Joe Cola here. Uh, there's always the energy drinks. There, I know gamers who show up to every event with a monster or a red bull um my preferred source of course and sean's is coffee now caffeine is great for keeping you awake and alert and can actually help you keep up the energy level at a game night and i'm not just talking about 24 hour extra lifestyle marathon events but any gaming event and let's not forget about our tea drinkers either when i was quitting smoking i also quit coffee and carried tea bags with me wherever i went i still will always keep some with me when i'm traveling when to have an option when hot water is the only thing around i, I never think of tea that's my bad deanna's actually saying in the chat we have real tea too not just pod d um yeah i just i don't know i don't i don't i'm not a tea drinker but that's the other thing which if you are going to provide beverages make sure you provide a wide variety uh, sugary beverages are next, like juice and non-caffeinated pop also work well for a quick boost of energy. The problem with sugary beverages is these don't tend to last as long. Mm. 
you don't get you tend to get a big high a sugar rush and then a low so they're great for short gaming sessions i personally think they're fantastic when you're playing like party games and you're playing quick ones and you got your and, and dexterity games with sugar can be quite fun but for a longer session people tend to neither keep drinking more and more to keep up that buzz and that's not really the healthiest choice Right. And if you're going to spill something on your game, you'd much rather have it be water than uh -huh. Coke. The sugars and acids in sodas, juices, and energy drinks are the last thing yes. you want near your components. No, I agree. And I the only thing worse in a way is wine for staining, but I would still rather have a purple piece than a destroyed piece. Then, of course, we get to the adult beverages um the secret i found with introducing adult beverages to game night is slow and steady you want like wines and beers these are good whereas mixed drinks uh, can be dangerous depending on how strong they're mixed and for most game nights shots should be pretty much out of the question uh, unless you're having a drinking night not a game night you want people to have that alcohol lubrication right you want people to loosen up a bit but not get drunk you don't want them to go too far now, when combining adult drinks with game night, remember that it's game night that has drinking. It should be about playing the games. The shrink drinks should be secondary. And if it gets to a point where the drinks and the effects of those drinks start taking over, it's probably time to call the game night portion of the night done. Now, it doesn't have to be the end of the evening, but it's probably a good time to put the games away or at least swap to more drinking games, games appropriate for the changing mood of the night. Now, to be fair, we are leaving out drinking game nights. Some of those yeah. dorm room memories, or lack thereof memory, where shots are commonplace and shotgun, shotgunning beers is a regular occurrence. But yeah. those tend not to be hobby game, hobby and RPG games and aren't really in our scope. Though if people were interested, we could probably do an episode specifically to drinking games. Yeah, all my drinking games that were all about watching TV and doing shots when things happened. And dice. one drinking game called of, Myers. We played a lot of dice in uh, in Yeah, I, I had no one dice game and that's it. I, I was never, like, despite the fact that I drink and I game, I never really combined the two that way. Well, you didn't do dorm. I did dorm. Yeah, so. I didn't do dorms. Yeah, dorms were not my thing. I went to a couple dorm parties, but did not do dorms. But yeah, you, like once once the night gets past, you put the heavy games away and you start playing the silly dexterity games and the games that can't be damaged and the games that you're not worried about getting ruined. Now, once it does get to that point in time in the night when people have had quite a bit to drink, we get to Michael's question on what to do when someone takes it too far. And I don't think this depends on whether you like the person or not. Like Michael's question is like, what if they get drunk and you like the person? It, I don't think it matters. If someone's gotten to a point where they are bothering other people or impacting the fun of other people, you have two choices. One, end the night. Call it, put an end to the event, let people finish up their games if possible, at least finish up their round and put the games away. The other, of course, is to end the night for that one person. Separate them from the place the others are playing so they don't disrupt things anymore. Now, this could mean, simply enough, just moving to another part, part of the house. Anytime there's drinking, there's going to be a group of people hanging out in the kitchen. I don't know what it is, but there will be. Or if you got a patio outside, you go out there. Or it's maybe getting the person an Uber, sending them to bed, heading home. Again, do not let the person drive. Offer them a place to crash if you can, or find a way for them to get a ride. Now, one other problem that should be considered is if it's the host that overdoes it. This can be tricky and lead to issues, so I highly recommend that it's discussed in advance, possibly at your, at your uh, you know, session zero or, or during the uh, invitation period, and that someone, possibly someone who's remaining sober, be willing to take over and guide things home for a safe finish for all. Very true. Now, what I want to finish off with tonight is, is a different look at this topic. And this is how you can bring a night of drinking and gaming to the next level through theming things. There are a few different ways you can tie in drinking with your game night. The most basic, which should be done for any game night where people are drinking, is to pick games to be played based on the drinks at the table. Um, this mainly applies when you have alcoholic beverages present, but uh, if people are drinking, you don't want heavy, long, epic games. Like once you add in drinking, you're going to turn your game night into a more social event. People's focus is gonna wander and it's gonna be less on the games and more on just hanging out and chatting and drinking and having fun than focusing on the games. Right, and there's more than a few ways to do this well. 
Now, the tone of the game play, being played can be something that shifts throughout the events, which I kind of alluded to earlier. You can start off with some medium weight games, possibly even something heavy, but shift to lighter and lighter fare as the night goes on. This works well when you've got a mix of players types at your party or at your game night and especially if you have a mix of drinkers and non-drinkers this way the non-drinkers and heavy game players can get their fix in early in the night and then make a choice if they want to stick around once things start to get lighter lighter and while the drinks start getting heavier right it can sometimes be frustrating for someone not drinking to sit down at a lightweight game surrounded by people who are a few drinks in there's nothing wrong with saying your goodnights and letting the drinkers get silly with some card or dexterity games that might not be your bag. The other thing, too, is if there are more than one, the gamers who aren't drinking could gather together and play their own game, though a bunch of loud drinking people nearby can still be disruptive. Now, for an even more memorable experience, instead of just worrying about the game complexity and weight and what people should be playing based on their ability to focus, you can pick games that are about what you're drinking. Like later in the show tonight, I will be reviewing a game called Unlabeled. This is a game you play while tasting beers. And Vinhos, a game about wine production. While you wouldn't want to play Vinhos while getting drunk, because it's a heavy game, it is the perfect game to play over a glass or two of wine. Similarly, you can tie your drinks to the theme of the game you're playing. Saki, Go Sushi, Domestic Lager, Blood Bowl Team Manager, Guinness, <laughs> Keltus. Yeah, exactly, right? Playing a Star Trek game. If this is this is another next step. If you go online, you can find recipes for any themed drinks. So if you're going to play a Star Trek game tonight, go online, look it up. You'll find a recipe for Romulan Ale. You'll find Klingon blood wine and Ractaginos if you want to stick to the non-alcoholic drinks. If you're playing Raiders of the North Sea or 878 Vikings, that's a good time to pull out some mead. And there's nothing like drinking a Trappist beer while playing around in Bruges. No, for all of these, again, you don't have to go for the booze. There are a huge number of mocktails and non-alcoholic beverages. Great for adding some ambiance and theme to your game night. And there are a number of coffee-themed games out there, like Coffee Roaster mm -hmm. and Viva Java. So in summary, the important thing to consider when talking about beverages at game night is, first off, making sure everyone is on the same page. Everyone knows the rules before the game night starts making sure to keep the game safe, and more importantly, once you get into adult beverages, keeping the players safe and making sure no one's ruining the fun for anyone else and everyone gets home safely. Adding themed beverages can be a very cool way to increase the immersion of a game night or adding themed games with the beverages, but again, always remember to be responsible. There are there you have some things that can be done to make a board game easier to... Wow. That's, <laughs> that was last week's. So oh, there you have uh, sorry. some ways to deal with beverages and gaming on <laughs> your game nights. Now we're going to check over in the lobby because we've had a whole bunch of oh, talk yeah. about what's going on. So to start things off, we had Jeff starting us off early on with, mm -hmm. I prefer coffee, tea, soda, or if I do drink, wine or cider or sipping whiskey. Getting Did blasted. that leave anything left? <laughs> getting blasted is not compatible with gaming. He left out beer, no. so no beer. Oh, no uh, beers. There you go. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm like looking through the list there. I'm like, I, I prefer liquid with my <laughs> gaming. Totally fair. Um, no, yeah, legit. Yep. And uh, getting blasted, no. Like there, there's there's a time and place for that. For and, well, maybe there isn't. But <laughs> talking talking about theming, uh, one thing for Star Trek, Earl Grey, hot. True. <laughs> we'll make everyone hot tea out of there, the, yeah. the the K cup replicator. Yeah. So uh, Jeff has to, had a few things to say. He had to step away. Yep. So we left us a few comments. And uh, his main group often does coffee or tea all around when gaming, mm -hmm. board, board or RPG, or just soda. Uh, yep. And his wife and he often open a bottle of wine and take it nice and slow. On yep. occasion, a nice glass of scotch or bourbon. But again, take those easy too. They're not, you so know. You got to watch it with the hard alcohol. Well, That's again, the... there's sipping, sipping whiskeys yep. and things. Um. So, uh, and again, everyone was, was pointing out tea, uh, and, and tea, loose leaf tea, different kinds of tea. Tea is the best thing is, uh, to provide if you're a host on a shoestring budget, uh, hot cool. water and some tea bags is, is about as easy as you can get. Fair. Um, and, uh, we, just to, to point out, uh, Mountain Dew in Canada has always been carbonated, but not caffeinated. Correct. 
<laughs> Did I say it wasn't carbonated? Yeah, you said not carbonated. Oh, Everyone had no. nice. Uh, it is caffeinated chuc- now, too, but uh, for a only long time some it videos. wasn't. Uh, yeah, well, it says the, the Mountain Dew Energy or whatever, but yeah. like the default Mountain Dew now is. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it took a long time because for years it was classified as a juice. Yeah. Any, and you could not add caffeine to a juice. Any, any beverage in Canada that contained juice was not allowed to have caffeine because juice is for kids. Yes. Caffeine is. Have... So that was their. Uh, their whole uh despite legislation. being someone who grew up on coke and sprite and <laughs> i drank way too much i can't believe i finally gave that up that was a while ago now but and apparently ryan says uh carrying around a baggie of whole beans and a hand grinder and fr- grinder and french press isn't the easiest way no uh, not at all but you know what i've had people show up with their own beans that has happened multiple times. I, uh, I, you know, Jeff's not here right now, but I wouldn't put it past him. Uh, no. I, mean, I know Jeff is a... Is and a to be honest, snob. I'd be pretty... If, if he shows up with some chance coffee, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> I'll pull out the Cuisinart, the, the self-grinding machine. Uh, I Again, I do carry tea bags with me. Uh, I usually actually have K-cups in my van as well because my work office has a K-cup machine that doesn't provide us with any K-cups. Um, <laughs> what is the biscuits thing? What is, uh, what they were, they were having that? a dis- uh, discussion of how to play Blades in the Dark around a t- around tea. Uh, okay. So picture a picture for you: six dudes sitting around a table with a gray teapot and six little teacups, sipping Earl Grey tea while narrating the debauchery of Blades in the Dark. Biscuits were so wholesome. I stabbed the melon merchant in the neck. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey Ryan, you don't need a sleeping bag. We we have a very comfortable couch. The the we people crash here all the time. If if it's a drinking game night, we usually send the kids away. That's two beds there. They're bunk beds. They're kind of small, but people fit. Sean has spent many a night on that couch. Yeah, I think the couch is mine. I don't do I don't do beds at their house. I do yeah. the couch. <laughs> at one um, time, we did have a pullout couch that was great for that, but it didn't last. Yeah, pullout couches are are hit and miss. Um. Well, usually once you pull them out too many times, they, uh, they yeah, tend to it was, start failing. I don't know. I was disappointed. It was a big name brand. And it wasn't actually the pull-out part that failed. It was other parts yeah. of the couch. But yeah, There you go. So, Jeff, another one to note is switching to using poker chips instead of paper money or cardboard money as a way to protect because those can just be washed off. Absolutely. That's another fair point, too, right? Play games that can't be damaged, right? You play you play Azul except for the board if you had a way to – Laminate the board. If you get the neoprene mat for Azul. All your dominoes. All your domino games. <laughs> it's true. Dominoes were great. Yep. Finally, if you got a game or game night question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or email me directly at questions at tabletopbellhop.com. 